It is a mistake challenging a Titan. Now I end your existence. Oh, oh, scary. Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. Shut up, man. How's it going everyone, my name is Drew Underdog, and today I'll be discussing why Chronica is quite possibly the worst boss character that NetherRealms ever made, which is a real shame for the first female boss in the series. But without any further ado, let's get started after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Dashfight, your all-in-one stop for everything fighting games. Their main goal is to promote fighting games and empower the players. Do you want Mortal Kombat 11 content? They've got that, as well as Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, and so much more. So jump right into the fighting game multiplayer and see all the exciting stuff they have prepared for you. Whether it's guides and pro tips, or interviews with pro players, VODs and highlights from the biggest FGC scenes, or news and updates on trending fighting game topics. Whether you're a grandmaster or a newbie, Dash Fight has your back, so make sure to check them out today. Strength gathers. The new era draws ever closer. A boss character is supposed to test your abilities in a fighting game, everything you've learned so far as you're practicing your character. And if the game does have a sub boss, then they're kind of like the practice exam. However, unfortunately, Chronica fails at this concept completely. I mean, you can't even combo her properly. And as a result, the entire boss fight just doesn't feel like Mortal Kombat. I mean, this series was built on its amazing long combos. But because it is literally impossible to launch Chronica into the air, you can't experience one of the greatest joys of a Netherrealm game. So if you want to beat Chronica, then you have to entirely forget about combos. And I'm not sure if Netherrealm intended to do this. Was she always meant to play this way, or did they just not have time to finish the animations, like her getting knocked down and getting back up and being juggled? Was it too hard to animate the cloth physics on her outfit? Like when she got knocked down and got back up, did it look all weird and they couldn't get it right? We might never know the real reason, but the fact of the matter is, you cannot combo this character correctly. Instead, it's all about hit stun. Find a move that stun locks her and keeps you close, and you've basically won the fight. It's working. It's working. Let's go. It's working. <laughs> or you can cheese her with some really good projectiles since she literally can't crouch. You're no match for my zoning, BS. Haha. -ha. You can spam her up close or you can spam her from far away, and both techniques are pretty effective, which leads to my next point. You should have accepted my offer, Chronica. I would have allowed you to wield great influence. Fighting game bosses are designed to be difficult, and sometimes the developers go too far and make them broken beyond belief. Like Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat 2. I've heard horror stories of how tough this guy was to beat. Now luckily I was a bit young when that game was in arcade, so I didn't play it very much. But even so, I've heard this boss fight can cause PTSD. He was just that ridiculously unfair unless you knew how to exploit him. And even if you did know the tricks, he was still pretty tough to beat consistently. Because keep in mind, boss fights back in the day were designed to drain quarters, and as a result they were as tough and cheap as possible. Now, thankfully, the bosses in Netherrealm games have never been that cheap. Sure, they have armor and some really damaging attacks, but their combos are usually short and simple. Except for Brainiac, who can literally kill you with two combos, but he doesn't do that very often. Now, when it comes to difficulty, Chronica is possibly the easiest boss to beat in any Netherrealm game. She seems tough to fight at first, but many characters can stun lock her for tons of free damage. And honestly, the scariest thing she does is leave the stage and force you to fight a regular character. Because on a high difficulty setting, those characters can kill you much faster than Chronica can. But thankfully, they have really low health, so two combos and they're gone. However, even so, the boss fight is way scarier when Chronica leaves than when she's on screen, because once she shows up, just keep pummeling her up close and she's stunlocked. History rewinds, giving way to the new era. No! Chronica is honestly one of the most creative boss fights that Netherrealm has ever made, especially when compared to the most boring characters like the Injustice Superman fight, because that's just Superman, only he's really cheap. He reads your inputs and stuff like that, but he's not very creative. Now, thankfully, Brainiac was a bit better in Injustice 2 since he does fight you with his entire ship, and you normally can't do that when you play as him. And as mentioned earlier, he does do stupid damage with a single combo. However, Chronica really stands out as a boss character because unlike anybody else, she does not use brute force. Instead, she uses her 
her powers in a variety of creative ways. She can rewind you and do damage over time, she can suspend projectiles that attack all at once, she has weird shield abilities, all that interesting stuff. And honestly, I love this choice that Netherrealm made. It's a very nice change of pace and a breath of fresh air. My only real gripe is that the attacks are kind of confusing at first, at least from a visual perspective. A lot of the time when you fight her, you'll take damage and you're not sure what even hit you or why you took damage at all. So when you first fight her, she can be a bit confusing and it's not clear why you're taking damage. So in that one regard, Netherrealm could have done a bit better, but I still love the creativity overall. I love that she's not just a brute force character. Plus, she summons a dinosaur for crying out loud, which is so cool. In fact, it would be awesome if there was more ancient animals that attacked you. That would keep things interesting. I understand it would have been really difficult and likely cost a lot of money, so I understand why they didn't do it, but it would have been really sick to have even more dinosaur creatures. Like I've been saying, Chronica really is a creative boss fight, and this creativity might be the best thing going for Chronica. I honestly do consider her the most creative boss fight that Netherrealm has ever made when it comes to her attacks, how she leaves and summons lackeys, all that awesome stuff. I could honestly write an essay on why this boss fight is so great in terms of creativity, but unfortunately, here is where the compliments end, because now we have to talk about this. The realms as you knew them are undone, erased cannot save a future that no longer exists. In a fighting game, it really helps when a boss character has strong presence in the story. For example, M. Bison is the one hosting the Street Fighter tournament, and Argus is the master of all demons and stuff like that. Mortal Kombat has had some strong bosses as well, outside of Blaze, who is literally a final boss and that's it. He doesn't have any connection with the heroes or the villains of the story, he's just a big guy you have to beat. However, outside of that one small exception, the bosses are pretty good in Mortal Kombat games. And I think most would agree that Shao Kahn is the best boss in Mortal Kombat, but I would argue that Shang Tsung is just as good, if not better. And Shinnok could honestly be a very interesting character in the story mode, but he never gets any screen time to cement his place in the story. I think he shows up for three chapters in Mortal Kombat X, and that's about it. Not very intimidating as a boss character. However, now it's time for Chronica, the secret villain who's been behind everything. She claims to have won and reset the timeline over a hundred thousand times. And that's supposed to make her sound really imposing and almost omnipotent, like a real god. But to me, it just makes her stupid. You're telling me she's been doing this for millions of years and she still hasn't succeeded in her perfect timeline? Good lord, lady, how many do-overs do you need? You're either too dumb to accomplish your goal or it's actually impossible and you're just wasting your time, which still makes you an idiot either way. I really don't like this perfect timeline motivation that Netherrealm gave Chronica. I really wish instead they had just made her like Galactus? What if she feeds on the actual life force of the realms and keeps resetting things after Armageddon? Because once Armageddon is finished, everyone is dead. So she has to rewind time to continue feasting all over again, and she essentially lives forever just eating your soul slowly. Now that is a scary villain, someone who keeps resetting time itself just to slowly eat everybody's life force. Imagine being a character like Liu Kang. You win all these crazy tournaments and defeat literal gods like Shinnok, but then you discover a being who is above time itself, who is slowly sucking on everyone's life force like it's a lollipop. How intimidating would that be to know that your entire existence is a joke and she just chews on you like bubblegum? But no, she just sucks at her job and keeps resetting things to try again. But things get even worse from here. Chronica's powers are extremely vague, and I think the writers did that on purpose because otherwise her losing to anybody is laughable from a writing standpoint. In the story mode alone, we see her completely freeze time for basically no no reason. She's monologuing to her headless son for no reason. So clearly she can stop time at her will just because she feels like it. Then we see her rewind time to restore an entire castle just because she can. Then after that, she literally merges two different points in time like it's nothing. She does all of this in the first 30 minutes of the game. But wait, there's more. Chronica has a special crown that allows her to rewind existence itself, and it also makes her much stronger in a fight. She can even take her most dangerous enemies and trap them in a separate realm if she needs to. And then last but not least, she can seemingly teleport anywhere at will and freeze people in place while she does so. There is no logical way that she could ever lose in a convincing way. Except she's a moron. Chronica's plan is so flawed that it almost seems intentional. As if she wants failure to be a possibility just to keep things interesting. Which would honestly be an interesting story twist, but nope, she's just that dumb. She keeps her special crown in a location where our heroes can reach it. She makes her presence known to her enemies and even tells them how to beat her. Your combined 
power threatens my vision for the timeline. She allies with characters who are obviously going to betray her, and she refuses to kill characters who could stop her, just to keep their almost useless revenants around, which makes no sense because killing them is what creates the revenants. Literally, any villain with Kronika's powers would do a better job than her. Even jobbers like Baraka and Collector could not possibly mess up this badly. And the worst part is, you can tell the developers wanted Kronika to appear smart. They wanted her to be a mastermind above everyone else, stronger and better than any villain before. And yet somehow, they unintentionally made her the most incompetent boss to ever exist in a fighting game. If you still don't believe me, then check out these wonderful videos on screen. As you can see, Kronika honestly is the worst boss in Netherrealm history. She's not fun to fight and becomes stupid easy to beat once you learn the exploits. Her behavior and decisions in story mode make her objectively dumber than any boss villain who's come before. Her main redeeming quality is her interesting attacks, which makes her far more unique than any boss before her. And make no mistake, that is something to be proud of, but in every other regard, Kronika honestly is the worst boss in Mortal Kombat history. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. How do you feel about Kronika? I'd honestly love to know. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like while you're down there. It really does help my channel out a ton. And finally, one more shout out to Dash Fight for sponsoring this video. If you love fighting games and you want to stay up to date, make sure to check out their website and their YouTube channel. They have so much there to check out and they keep sponsoring fighting game channels like mine. So make sure to level up your game and check them out.